Good evening to everybody and a virtual greetings for the Faculty of Humanities 2020 webinar. We're so glad to everybody have everybody join us tonight. Um, we firstly just want to acknowledge the presence of our Executive Dean, that's Professor Mary Duker, and her Deputy Dean, Dr. Jackie Luck. And we've also got our three directors of school that are on the call. We've got Professor Peter Binsbergen, we've got Professor Marius Krauss, and we've got Dr. Babalo Makutwan. Thank you to all the heads of departments that have also joined us and the staff from the faculty. My name is Asenzo Tulu from the faculty, and we are absolutely delighted to have all of our guests that have joined us. I'm told that we have every province um, represented, right from KwaZulu Natal to the Western Cape, except for Northwest. Um, and I'm wondering if that's because of the rivalry that we have with Pukas, but um, if it isn't, if they, someone has joined from the Northwest um, since, we welcome you also tonight. But the best, the most people that we want to say hi to is the ladies and gentlemen from across the country who are in high school, whether you're in grade 11, whether you're on matric, we want to say absolutely a warm welcome to you. Tonight is all about you. It's about your interests, it's about your passion, about the humanities, and hopefully by the end of tonight, answering some of the questions that you have. Before we continue, just want to give you um, a few house rules. So we will be having a question and answer session at the end. And one of the ways that we want to go about that is that we've actually developed a WhatsApp chatbot because we know that you guys are on WhatsApp a lot of the time. So we've developed a WhatsApp chatbot and I'll get to the details of how that's going to work um, in the next slide. So if you have questions relating to your applicant score, how many points you need to get into a program, what programs um, we have in our departments or faculties, then you will be able to ask those questions on the WhatsApp chatbot. I'll put the number on um, in two slides to come. But if you've got questions that arise from the things that you hear on the call, if it's from the things that you hear from our panelists, which we'll get to a little bit later on, um, then you can type your question in in the Q&A section. So that's the kind of ground rules. Your questions, if they are about technical related things, ask on the WhatsApp chatbot. But if it's something that arises from what you hear from um, on the call, please put that into the Q&A section. So I'm just gonna show you a little video that talks about our WhatsApp chatbot. Literally, you can give it a shot right now. That is the number. So if you are on WhatsApp, you can add um, this number onto your WhatsApp. You can say hi and you're going to get a response. And like I said, if you've got questions pertaining to what to study, how to study, how much you need to get into a program, you can pop your questions on there. Um, so I'm just going to leave it on screen for a little while so that you guys can get that number down. And if you aren't looking at the screen, 065 595 8259. So that's the ground rules. That's what how we're going to be operating tonight. Um, without wasting any more time, I actually want to get into the content, um, the most important content for today, which is sharing with you what we've created from a faculty perspective in terms of how we would like to convince you why you should join our faculty. I um, hope you're gonna enjoy it. I hope if you're watching on a phone, if you're watching on a laptop, your audio is up. We've got um, some awesome videos to share with you today. Okay, without wasting any more of your time. Here we go. South Africa is one of the world's most divided um, and unequal societies. Our task is to save lives. Our task is to minimize this infection rate.
to the student protest and again a scene of much chaos where police had to use stun grenades and rubber bullets this morning to disperse protesting students. From some of the associations representing social scientists in South Africa, they feel that the humanities are in a crisis. The main, the main thing I think we would like you guys to take away from that video is that with where the world is currently, we as a faculty are seeing it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to breed a new generation of thinkers. It's an opportunity to breed a new generation of graduates that are going to impact their respective fields and obviously are going to inf impact their country and the continent. And we are absolutely privileged to be able to have alumni that embody those set of values, to have alumni that have gone in the different fields in which they are found and have done amazing things. And essentially, our webinar is centered around them um, because we figured, well, you know, we could have a whole bunch of lecturers and professors um, talk to you tonight. And you can really tell um, the lecturer and me um, loves talking and it probably would have just been a one way thing. And so we thought, let's get some of our alumni um, on the call and let's hear what they have to say. Let's get their experience and we and we feel that that's going to be the best kind of advice for you to be able to see what our faculty is about, but also what you can do, um, both in your journey coming into the faculty and also um, going out. So this is a little intro video just on who our alumni are. And so these are our six um, alumni whom we are absolutely proud of and they represent, um, if you see their qualifications, so they represent um, our three schools. We've got Michaela Oosthuizen and Vue Mabulu who represent the School of Language, Media and Communication. We've got Anela Siswana and Samantha Benon who represent the School of Governmental and Social Sciences. And then we've got Donovan Goliath and Latuma Nkolo who represent the School of Visual and Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, they have um, made and left impact um, and a mark in their respective fields. And what we'd like to share with you now, and I'm just gonna have to 
switch my screen quickly, is what they have to say to you guys listening. Um, so just give me a second while I switch my screen so that I can play that video. Blocks on my head, yeah. What you wish you knew in grade 12? Um, hmm, how difficult this would be, um, and how much commitment and work, and actually, what graphic design was. Guys, I'm from Umtad, and, and I went to a school called Zingisa Comprehensive High School. I knew nothing about this. Um, I had no, there were no mentors, there were no career guidance people that came to our school to tell us about it. I had no clue what I was getting into, um, which made my first year very, very difficult. Spent a lot of time in the library. So that's what I wish I knew. Um, I think kids nowadays, uh, because you've got access to the internet and to social media and all of those things, um, it can be a little bit easier for you. But yeah, do your research. Oh, what I wish I knew when I was in grade 12 is that um, I'll definitely never stop being a student um, because I'm still learning, like whether it's officially and registered through university or if I'm learning on my own. Um, I, I am in advertising and social on the social media space to be specific. And that means that I always need to be up to date with the new updates of what's happening in the world in terms of technology, how we can best use that to um, basically get our messaging across and our comms across. So that's something that I wish I knew in Black Patrick, that get into the habit of learning and reading all the time because that does help. Oh, hi! Uh, that my dreams are valid. Funniest thing someone seen to you when you told them what you were studying? Oh. Um, they just assumed I was going to do acting, which like I have done and did end up doing. I've got an agency in Joburg and all that jazz. But yeah, I think my degree is so diverse and you can do a lot with it. Um, yeah, I think my advice would be to really just upskill. I learned to do really early on because, you know, the university does a great job in the degree that they provide for you. But I think it's so important for you to also be upskilling yourself about what's happening in the industry. Huh. I had an uncle once tell me, you know, when I said I'm studying uh, graphic design, basically, he was like, Ugh. so you're going to be printing Mickey Mouse t-shirts at flea markets. Mm. The chest pains. You know, when it feels like you need a Rennie after somebody comments something like that. Yeah, past the gavel's gone. Ugh. Oh, um, people have the misconception that our faculty um, or what I studied is just for people that want to be on TV. Um, but definitely MCC is not limited to that. There's a lot more that you can do. I ended up in advertising. Um, so it's very like funny when people think I want to be a presenter. And I'm like, no, actually, I don't want to be in front of the camera. biggest misconception about the qualification you studied that it was uh, it's not it's not a serious career uh, that it it's just a hobby in jail terrible that everyone studying political science wants to become a politician <laughs> hey. so my studies teach a lot about knowing yourself understanding your mind, your conscious, unconscious, and those who are around you. Oh, I haven't done a selfie in a while, didn't I? Was this handsome? So clock! So clock! Oh, biggest benefit of the qualification you studied. Uh, biggest benefit for me, I think, has been um, how diverse it has been. So I moved from being an art director at an ad agency uh, to doing comedy. And I was just like, look, man, it's all creativity at the end of the day. Um, but I've also been able to contribute uh, when it comes to photography, to fine art, to drawing, 
illustration, whatever it is. Um, so it's really helped me and it's, you know, I've been making money now during the lockdown um, and yeah, basically using what I studied, which has been fantastic. Biggest benefit, Whew. people skills, eh? Hey? People skills. Listen properly. I am so glad that I had to do so much teamwork. I hated it at the time, um, but yeah, my, my degree also really helped me be very analytical. Um, I can have like quite a good oversight of a situation and be able to pull out really good insights from that, which has really helped me in the space that I'm in, in digital marketing. Um, so yeah, it really kind of helps you analyze things really well and text and through books and you're like, how is this relevant? But those skills totally help you when you do your job one day. Money or happiness? Uh, obviously, money. Um, I believe that my career offers me the opportunity to have money. So money, 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 money. Hit me. What do you have next? Advice for parents whose children want to study in the humanities. Don't be afraid. Um, I know that uh, a lot of these, these things are unconventional and it's not what you know. Um, I think the world is uh, set up and designed for anybody right now who wants to study um, in the humanities. Um, allow them to go and do their thing. Um, I think there are many opportunities right now, especially with the internet and with social media. Um, it's the perfect time. And they will make money, lots of it. To escaping poverty. <laughs> so I hope you um, you enjoyed that, and thank you to all of our alumni for sharing the incredible stories, for sharing their advice. I think most importantly, hope that you guys were taking notes and that you were taking cues about some of the things that they did um, going into their degrees, some of the questions they got, and I think most importantly, how they overcame. Um, because as we've been talking about, studying in the humanities isn't um, isn't for the faint-hearted. It, it isn't the easiest thing to to bring up. I think as a, a qualification or as a, a field, and so it's important that you guys get as much um, ammunition as it were to be able to to approach and to share um, the topic with your parents or with your guardians. Um, if you've got a sharp eye and you had seen our digital invite, what you will notice is that one of um, our alumni wasn't mentioned or his video didn't play um, on on that video that just played now and that is because we have got him live on the call um but laduma are you there Hi, hey hey bro how you doing great thank you and you great. Good, man. Good, 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 good. Um, it was exciting seeing, um, I think, what some of the guys were sharing from their journey. And we thought, yeah, let's have a conversation with you and let's hear your perspective. Of course, we know Matkosa has been in the news um, quite a lot in the last couple of weeks. Matkosa Africa now. You've got a, a store coming up in Cape Town. Um, I think it was it Vogue who voted you seven one of the seven best fashion brands in africa is that correct yeah correct uh, we were on a list on a lot of headlines um, that were happening during the black lives matter movement so therefore a lot of, a lot of companies like which is magazine published published a list of brands look out to that are coming from Africa that are yeah. and coming up with a new narrative. Yeah. It's super exciting. And and I think as a young person, as someone in high school, you can look at those headlines, you can see the social media posts, you can see I mean every time, you know, Matosa Africa drops something, similarly to the Every time, you know, Rich and Nisi will drop something, it's trending on the timeline. And so, uh, you know, uh, a 17, 18 year old can look at that and go, you know, I want to build my own fashion empire or I want to build my own textile empire. The interesting thing for me, and that's the first question I think I'd, I'd like to, to ask you, is when was the first time that you you realized that textile design is what you wanted to do and, and what, what got you to that point? 
Um, technically, the first time that I realized that I had a chance uh, in textile design was when I was doing my grade eight, grade eight course at the Lawson Brown High School in Port Elizabeth. I realized that Lawson Brown was one of the best design schools in Port Elizabeth. And luckily they offered textile design and graphic art and various creative subjects as actually official subjects. So I, gen I then chose textile design and history of art as a subject. Um, I then chose um, graphic art as a subject as well. And um, right after I matriculated, I wanted to find the best, best textile institution in South yeah. Africa. And um, there was no better choice for me than the Nelson Mandela University because they had like a super intense textile design course. And uh, after, after, after four years, got my degree. Okay, yeah, and I remember you, you did your BTEC and it was that BTEC that um, I think then gave you your first set of headlines. Um, winding, running back from, from before that four years, so you knew from grade eight, you did the graphic arts, you went to Lawson Brown, you had a very clear sense. At which point did you have to share that with your family or share that um, with the people around you and what what were their responses? What what were people like when you said to them, you want to study textile design? Um, actually, luckily, my late mother um, passed away right before I showed interest in textile design. And fortunately, I've had a very under understanding and open-minded mother. Um, she was a knitwear designer back in the 80s okay and i when i had to make my career choice when i was in grade eight she did ask me what was my career choice and i, I told her that i want to do something that's somewhere along the lines of design or, okay. or it or science she was very positive about all of the suggestions that I had and never yeah. downplayed even the fashion slash um, textile side. And um, her, her reaction was great, but the reaction that I got from my peers were obviously different. You know, a lot of them that I would tell about textile design, they would think yeah. that it's about designing tiles, like actual tiles. <laughs> like kitchen, kitchen. tiles. Um, even myself, you know, I had to research further because the textile title didn't really make sense initially to me, you know? And then I realized that, yo, if I study this course, I would be able to design carpets, towels, underwear, yeah. curtains, wallpaper, pretty much everything that is fabric. I got so fascinated, you have no idea. I even hired a book from, the, from, from a local library and actually did some further research. But I couldn't look at benchmarks around my hood or around Port Elizabeth or South Africa or Africa and say that I want to be like that guy, you know? Yeah. Um, I had to take a leap of faith and say that I'm going to look at the highest benchmark. I want to be like Gucci. I want to be like Tom Ford. I want to be like LVMH. Yeah. And not knowing that today, well, on this coming Friday, I'll open up a boutique right next to them here at the waterfront. I mean, I'm at the waterfront. Uh, mall right now um so yeah yeah okay that's i think that's an incredible story because having a, a supportive um support structure as it were whether that's fa family whether that's friends is important um and i mean you, you heard donovan joking earlier talking about his uncle who said that he was, was going to print mickey mouse t-shirts at you know at, at the flea market so it becomes important that when you get to the place where your passion starts to become an option for you to study, that, that, that you voice that out. And the question that comes to me um, is, you know, the, so the child who's going to be walking past or who goes to the VNA waterfront and, and, and they see that store and they see, um, you know, the incredible things that Montlosa Africa is doing. 
that child go, gets into to a taxi, goes back Elanga or goes back in New Brighton or goes back um, in Soweto and has to open up the conversation with their parents and say, Mama, Dada, I, I, I want to study design. Now, it, it's an interesting dynamic and, and, and that isn't the case for, you know, everyone who's a prospective study. And even if it's not design, even if it's politics, even if it's anthropology, sociology, fine arts, whatever the case is, right now in the country, you know, with everything that's happening, what would you say, how would you advise um, a teenager to be able to open up about that conversation, number one, how, how do they bring that up? Obviously, issues around money, around stability. Um, and then number two, how would you advise the parents? Um, having had the experience that you had with your support mother, how would you, how would you support, um, advise the, the parents? Um, I, I'd say for me, it, it starts with the mindset. And uh, when the mindset is actually open to the impossible, one, are flexible enough to actually think of any career that they want to go to um, venture into. And there's often a misconception in certain neighborhoods or in certain families that certain careers are meant for certain racial groups. Um, with the store that we are opening up here at, at the v &A waterfront, we actually named the boutique it is possible black child that's the official name of it because uh we want to inspire everyone that is in a point of underprivilege to think of pursuing careers that seem impossible yeah. um what i would advise to young kids is that or, or students that are in high school they are on the journey of going to university is that the minute you think that a certain career is impossible to achieve, that's the one that you should be going for. Sure. That's the career that um, you have a chance on because you will fight. Sure. I had to fight when uh, during my university years. Uh, I went, I attended university each and every day. Um, some of the lectures that are still there can even witness seeing me on a Sunday, seeing me on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day, on New Year's Eve, yeah, at man. school. And when they ask me what I'm doing there, I would tell them that I'm here to use the resources that I paid for. And um, it is all good and well to be able to access these institutions, but not using them or leveraging them doesn't do justice, you know, to, to the dreams and aspirations that you want to achieve. You know? So sure. I think that kids should take their parents, take them to the institutions where they want to study and look at the infrastructure so that they can know better or go and talk to the lecturers or speak to the students that are currently doing those courses because often sometimes, you know, students would choose certain courses and realize after a year that this is meant not meant for them. I believe that one can make a hundred percent accurate choice yeah. when it comes to their by simply doing like deep research on what certain courses entail and what is required of them, how much financial resources are needed. And that's one of the most crucial part, you know, because um, people don't prepare financially for courses. Okay. But not to say that I prepared as well. I came unprepared. I studied for four years with a NASFAS loan, but mm. during my first, second year, I realized that I need to prepare for my third year and fourth year. I then applied for multiple bursaries and I got three bursaries for for my BTEC course, you know, so those are some of the most crucial things that um, students have to do, like at least a, in, a year in advance before they join in university. Sure. Okay. So, so from the student side, you, you've got to know your story. You have to know, this is my passion. And if I think that 
it's a little bit ridiculous or it's a little bit ambitious, that possibly then that's the one that you should pursue. Because like you say, you're going to fight for it because it means that you, you will want to be there and maybe to someone else, they're going to want to prove um, why that their passion is. So, so we've, we've, we've covered the, the student side and about doing research and making sure that you go to your parents with a story. And it's not just, oh, okay, I want to study this and this and this, but actually okay. I've done a bit of research. And that's why, I mean, we're really excited to have this WhatsApp chatbot because we're hoping that that's the gap that it's going to fill. Not everyone can sit on Google the whole day um, and do research about particular fields or even about qualifications. So we're really hoping that what the chatbot is going to do is for the child that is in Epizan or who's Enanda or who, wherever they are, they can just get on WhatsApp and ask a question and they're going to be able to get those those answers. So so I hope the, the students that are listening, you are taking notes and, and you covered it now. Now, the, the big question is on the parent side. So, you know, there may be parents on the call who are going, hi, 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 not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not my child. You know, um, I mean, I've heard parents say, um, you know, my child, I, I, I raised you and, and I took you to the best schools and now you want to go and draw or now you, you want to go and study music. Um, what would you say to the parents um, who who have genuine concerns, um, who want their children to be financially stable, who want their children to have careers that are going to um, sustain them and that are going to allow them to flourish? How would you um, how would you advise the parents? Uh, there's a very crucial point that I actually forgot to mention on the on the parts that I was trying to elaborate on. Mm -hmm. um, which is something that should be emphasized from the parent parents perspective and the students student perspective is that the career that you choose is like it's sort of like indirectly a business choice okay and in this business in in this business decision that has to be made the parent is the investor <laughs> I like that. Um, every year you pass, or every year course or uh, course that you successful on, you are making an impression to investor. So you 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 therefore have to protect your investor's investment. Sure. Yes, it's an investment that one does not have to pay back. But what happens in a case where you are your tuition is covered by a bank or is covered by NASFAS, you still have someone to be accountable to. So sure. it is very important that parents as investors that they get the FICA documents. <laughs> That's what we call it in, <laughs> uh, 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 in business. They must yeah. get all the compli compliance documents, you know, that yeah. will make that will make their child, which is the applicant in this case, <laughs> a, 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 a credible choice for that course, you know. So um, the child has to research how much the fees are and what resources will be needed for the course um, yeah. and any other thing that will be needed, you know, for their, for their course. That's the responsibility of the investor. And the investor has to go even beyond that information and go and find out themselves because chances are, you know, um, if you, if the borrower is not focused enough or uh -huh. not disciplined enough, the investment will be lost, you know, and, 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 and unfortunately some parents have to actually go through that burden. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, I think that's that's a beautiful analogy. Um, is that you think of your studies as a business? You think of it as a as a I want to say a career. You think of it as a business, and you're an entrepreneur, and you are having to get capital um, from an investor. And I think w when you put it that way, put that to my it immediately. I'm hoping to the the high school learners that you've got on the line that they are listening. It it gives them a sense of having a seriousness about their future. So instead of it just being something that I want to do by the way, but actually 
I'm going to get those FICA documents. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm compliant every year. I'm going to make sure that my investor is happy and that the investment that they make on a year to year basis, you know, in business, growth is one thing, but you need year on your growth. There, there, there needs to be an accumulation. Um, you know, the dividends needs to grow over time. So hoping that the, you know, um, our young people that are listening are, are taking notes and I think that that is some great advice and that's something hopefully that is going to produce. I don't want to say the next Latuma because you've, <laughs> you've, you've, you've pioneered and you are running your race and what we want. And that's what we are very unapologetic about in the faculty is we want people that are going to run their own race and we want people that are going to leave their own mark and that are in their own lane whether it's through media like Michaela, whether it's Uviwe, you know, in advertising, whether it's Uputanele, you know, in, in sociology, um, in whichever those spaces are, Sam in the political activist space, um, Donovan in, in, you know, in creativity and um, comedy and yourself in, in textile, which, whichever the space is that you leave your mark and, and not anybody else's. Um, so thank you so much for your insights. Um, of course, we, we could talk for much longer, but I am constrained by um, my, my professors and, and the people that are running this show um, um, so excellently. So thank you so much for your insights. Um, thank you so good. much, Tenzo. And good luck to all the students. Yeah, awesome. So I'll check now, but we'll, we'll, we'll see for later. I'll we'll give you a heads up if anybody has um, specific questions for you, but um, we'll give you a heads up later on. Okay, excellent. So um, there you have it. I hope you guys um, were listening and I hope that was fruitful for, for especially our high school learners and being able to get an insight in terms of what mindset do you need to have if you want to study. I'm sure by everything that we've spoken about, even the videos that we shared earlier, you begin to realize that you, you need to have quite a resolute um, attitude um, coming into the humanities. And we believe the reason um, that is the case is because we are the humanities. We have humanity even in, in the core of our name. And so in order for us to leave an indelible mark on humanity, we, we need to have a, a sense of resolve about what we do and the way that we do it. Um, and if you want to find out a little bit more, so I'm just going to play a video for you that's going to show our different schools. It's going to flash um, what the different departments are on there just really, really quickly. Um, and then more especially who you can contact if you would like to. Awesome. So I hope as those contacts were up on your screen, um, if you are quick, as I know many of our young audience will be, you would have taken a snapshot or you would have taken a picture. Um, but if not, again, just want to remind you about the bots that you are able to ask the questions. This is the, this is the field. This is the qualification that I'm thinking about. Um, and you should get a response on there. My section is done. Um, want to thank the panelists um, before we move over to our question and answer session. Thank you for listening um, and hope you enjoy the rest of the webinar. God bless.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Jackie Lick, and I'm going to be hosting you now in the question and answer segment. We hope that you have a good sense of our faculty and the humanities and the role that it plays in shaping our world and helping us to understand our times. It was very, very exciting to hear our alumni and to hear of the wonderful journeys that they've had. They continue to inspire us. So we are going to devote some time to questions that are uh, have been asked and uh, that often come our way as well. And responding to them will be our three school directors um, and two academic staff members. So without further ado, we are going to go head straight to the questions. So the first question um, I have um, is um, a question about visual art and design. And the question is, should I have taken design or visual art at school to study a BVA? And to respond to that question, we're going to ask our director of school, Professor Peter Binsbergen, uh, to respond. He is director in the School of um, Visual and Performing Arts. So over to you, Prof. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening to everybody. It's an interesting question and one that we usually get uh, quite often and the answer to that question is as a school subject it is always helpful but not necessary to gain access to study in the school of visual and performing arts whether it be graphic design visual art um, uh, applied design fine art or music thank you And Prof, um, while we have you here, um, a similar question. Do I need to have studied music uh, to enroll for a BMAS? Uh, no, not at all. Um, um, but we do expect uh, candidates who enroll for the courses to be proficient in whatever instrument that they specialize in. And that goes for the voice as well. So the uh, you should be able to play an instrument and that is required for the audition at stages but uh, we can talk about that a little later if there are if there are questions but music proficiency in terms of being able to play the instrument or have a good singing voice is a prerequisite the the, the, the proficiency level um, that we do, we kind of expect at an entry stage when one comes to study in our school thank you so, Prof, if I have, a, if I can't sing, I can't enroll. Is that what you say? <laughs> if I sing false. <laughs> okay. Um, so, thank you, uh, Prof. Binsbergen, for that. Um, I'm going to ask um, the acting director of the School of Governmental and Social Sciences, uh, Dr. Babawa Magokwana, to respond to this question, uh, Doc. What is sociology and anthropology and, and what career opportunities are there for me if I would like to study those uh, fields? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Jekilak. Um, let me first say that I'm coming from the School of Governance and Social Sciences, and that includes public administration and leadership, history and politics, sociology and anthropology. Those are the disciplines that fall under governance and social sciences within Mandela. Uh, to come directly to your question, sociology and anthropology, uh, basically what we do, we study human behavior. We study different groups, uh, different cultures. We study individuals in society. What that means is that we are able then to predict the human behavior in society. Uh, let me just make an example. If you have a big data, we call it big data, and you've done some research on big groups, you are able to predict a certain kind of behavior in society. Let me make an example. HIV AIDS, when it used to be a big thing in the 80s, uh, medical staff and health practitioners had to consult uh, sociologists and anthropologists to make predictions around human behavior. Why do people do not react to education programs that were set in place to change the human behavior around the issues of HIV AIDS? So it's quite diverse and our students, they tend to go to different spaces, including um, uh, research institutes, 
including private and public organizations, um, including media and leadership. We've got lots of people in parliament right now. We've got lots of people who are working for private organizations because what we do, we provide critical thinking, we provide ability to write, we provide ability to do research in complex and different spaces. So you are able to cope as a student, uh, whatever environment that you are put in. So it's quite diverse. Uh, and also there are lots of um, opportunities for our students. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, that response. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Giovanni Poggi to respond to a similar question um, where somebody has asked, what is it that I can do if I study a BA general? Um, what are the subjects that one could be taking there? And what are the career opportunities? Thanks, Mr. Giovanni Poggi. Hi there, good evening. Uh, I've been told that we're allowed 30 seconds per a question answer so i'm going to i'm going to try as quickly as possible to get uh, through this so uh, with the ba general subjects that you can study um, the aforementioned from doc babalwa before me um, discussing the different governance subjects so uh, political science and public administration and then humanities subjects which uh, which incorporate uh, anthropology sociology um history so uh, along with uh, along with modern languages as well uh, is kind of the uh, main structure of the ba general course you would select the variety of your subjects from social sciences and modern languages at which uh, our university offers um, english afrikaans uh, Kosa, and french uh, and then, as also as part of the BA general, there's a there's a there's a pick and mix of uh, elective subjects from other faculties, just to give you a a more rounded uh, a more rounded course and a more rounded worldview when you're done. Um, if anybody has a specific question on politics, oh, what what can you do with it? Well, um, I think I'm only best place to answer what you can do with politics. Uh, uh, should you study it as your major in the BA general program? So uh, a, a list that I have here, uh, and, and it's actually quite interesting because what uh, Sam Bainon was saying uh, earlier is uh, she, she said that um, most people think you only study to become a politician. Uh, not quite true. It is one facet of it, but uh, there is also political analyst work. Um, researching and research consultancies, policy think tanks, diplomats or mediators, journalism, uh, academia like ourselves, and uh, non-governmental institutions, uh, intergovernmental institutions, and non-profit organizations as well. So there's a wide variety of career opportunities that follow. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Poggi. That was a, a comprehensive answer. I think a lot of people uh, have, would have those questions about the BA. So my next question is to Professor Maurice Krauss, who is director of the School of Language, Media and Communication. Uh, Prof Krauss, if you could tell us about the BA MCC. One of our, our alumni, uh, Michaela Uthazen, she has completed um, that uh, degree as far as I know and um, but for people who want to know what it's all about what would you say okay thank you um, yes uh, the BA MCC course um, is aimed at training you to be a journalist to make movies to write scripts um, and communicate in society to um, and use language in specific contexts like for instance um, if you want to write for a newspaper then you need language in order to express yourself um, um, it was interesting I was looking at all these questions and, and it seems to me <laughs> Most people want the impression that humanities means you can make you, you fashion or art or design. So it's a good thing that, that Babawa and Giovanni gave a background, a broader background. But but that is it then that you you 
In other words, um, and and it's also very practical orientated in the sense that you they they teach you how to do a production, make a short film, use your cell phone to make movies, etc. Um, so it is basically a course designed for all the the budding Steven Spielbergs out there who want to, as they said just before, to make money, I think. So um, then it's a good course. Um, and it's a structured course, so so you, you follow a specific structured course um, as part of the BAMCC. Nice, Prof. Um, as you can see, I, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult to, to choose from this bouquet of, of, of courses that we have um, in our faculty. Uh, everyone is as exciting as the next. So I have a question now for um, Ms. Barbara Kritzinger, uh, a question that many students ask is, are there bursaries available for students who want to study the humanities? What would you say, Barbara? I would say that there are bursaries available. There's quite a lot of different kinds of bursaries. Um, and I think I would rather you ask actually uh, people on the who are involved in that side of it, because I don't know very much about bursaries, really, to be honest with you. Thanks, Barbara. Um, yes, there are, like you say rightly, there are um, bursaries that are available, um, you know, uh, besides uh, NESFAS, um, there are provincial bursaries that uh, people can also be applying for, and it's uh, something that we will be publishing on our faculty um, Facebook page, uh, uh, a response to that question in, in more detail. Um, and now I think um, we have five minutes left. I'm going to thank you, the three school directors and the two academic staff members for responding to the questions. Please continue to post questions um, on our, the chat feature and as well as on the chat bot and we will compile them all and respond to them on our faculty Facebook page. I'm gonna hand over now to our Acting Dean, Professor Mary Duker. And so I thank you all, and I just wanna do a special shout out to the matriculants who are completing their syllabi. We're thinking of you all the best and uh, for your final exams as well. And we look forward to you journeying with us in 2021 as we continue to reimagine the humanities especially at this time when the world has changed overnight. So thank you and good night all. Um, hi everybody, uh, as Jackie said, I'm Mary Duca and I'm really excited to be able to acknowledge my colleagues and the contribution that they've made this evening to this webinar. Um, and and there, there are people that I would, would like to um, to, to name, obviously Jackie and the, the directors of the schools and the, their colleagues who've come forward and answered the questions in this latter part of the, the webinar have, have um, opened up a discussion that hopefully you will continue on the chat bot. And the, the list of names uh, that, that Senzo put up uh, will provide you with contacts and people will be really happy to respond and answer questions. Um, the, the next person I would like to, to pay huge tribute to is Senzo and his dream team, as he likes to call them, of designers and students, because the entire conceptualizing of this evening has been, um, has been driven by him and by his huge understanding that to talk to both parents and would-be students in the same breath is, is quite tricky because sometimes parents and students want to hear different answers. So I think that he's, he's done a fabulous job of it. The, um, the students, the former students, and two of them are formerly my own students, so I, I look at, with great interest at their trajectory. The, the alumni who stepped forward and who made presentations tonight. Uh, they are, they are um, role models in, in the, the humanities and I know that they too will welcome uh, 
comments and questions from you, and, and I'm sure that we can ask them to answer. So, Viwe, Sam, Michaela, Anele, and then Donovan and Laduma. And I do indeed remember Laduma and his his 24-7, 365 day um, working ethic. And Donovan for his sense of humor, and I met him on the first day he came to Varsity. So sorry, I'm reminiscing. And then finally, to the parents and to the, the prospective students. I hope um, parents to have faith in the humanities at this difficult time, to have a sense that the humanities and people in the humanities actually can change the world. And to, to believe in, in their, their children and to students of the, the would-be students of the humanities. We wish you well um, in your exams and we hope that we're going to see some of you, at least lots of you next year. So the best wishes, keep safe, wear your masks. That's an NMU thing. Thank you. From some of the associations representing social scientists in South Africa, they feel that the humanities are in a crisis. The, humani the, humani the humanities are in a crisis. Engineering, for example, medicine, nursing, teachers, those are where they And where um, all the bursaries are given. Uh, we talk about uh, these STEM subjects, uh, science, technology, and uh, of course, uh, mathematical Yeah.